Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden and today we're going to be doing two different things. I'm going to be giving you a seed update and I'm going to be um, potting up all of my seedlings and then I'm also going to be doing a very cool DIY garden idea with two old lampshades. Okay, so I have had several videos out lately of all the seedlings that I've got going and it's time to pot up a bunch of them. So I just wanted to give you a brief update. These are marigolds looking pretty good. Had about 60% germination on these. This is basil spicy saber. Had 100% germination on it, looking really nice. This is Zanzibar, had 100% germination on this as well. Next, I had Swiss chard Vulcan, and I had 100% germination. Next is Basil Mammoth, and I originally had 100% germination on this, but I dropped this tray, and so I killed some of it. <laughs> Next is um, Nasturtium Tip Top Mahogany. I probably had about 75% mm, germination on this looking really good you can tell that all of these really need to get potted up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start potting up this first round basically in this first round I'm just going to be utilizing garden soil I'm going to be mixing in some plant tone fertilizer and I'm going to be moving these smaller seed tray these smaller seedlings into larger containers so they can start growing on a larger root system Okay, so I got all those potted up. Potting up just means to take them to the next largest container. And I have another set of grow lights set up. It is too hot to put seedlings outside right now. Um, we have, they're expecting us to stay in the triple digits till at least the second to third week of September. So I need to grow these on inside. So this is my old seedling setup. And I'll link a video down below to this. It's an old video, so give me a little grace on it. It's a very inexpensive way to start a seed setup um, so that you can grow seeds inside. And the water I'm adding has some of that Alaska fish fertilizer in it. And y'all know me, I like to water from below. So I've got all my seedlings here and then um, I fill the containers with water and it's all starting to soak up water right now. So this is looking good. This will stay on about 12 to 14 hours per day. Okay, I was at one of those like Goodwill Restore Habitat for Humanity stores um, this past week. And I've been looking for things to create kind of my trellis doorway into the shade garden. And I, you know how I am. I want to reuse or recycle something. Anyway, while I was there, they had just a massive bin of lampshades for five bucks each. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I was looking at them. And then all of a sudden, I just had a vision. What if I put them like this and turned it into a planter? So the idea being that I would move, remove all this fabric that I would lay in um, some chicken wire and then potentially like a towel or something. And then I could fill this top part as a planter. So I thought, let's try it out. And my investment probably is going to be $5 for each of these. I already have the chicken wire. I already have the towels and stuff. So basically 10 bucks to see if we can mess around with this and see if we can get the look of a high end planter. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is just take a utility knife and just kind of just start checking this out on how to get these off. I'm not 
really familiar with how um, lampshades are made. But let's see. I think I'm going to need some scissors too. So basically I'm just cutting through the top layer of fabric all the way around. And it looks like it's pretty much just glued on here. than I thought it was going to be. Let's do this one. Now I know this one has the beads. I don't know if I'm going to keep the beads or not. I just thought the beads were pretty. <laughs> okay. Okay. So one is slightly larger than the other. So I was kind of thinking I might put the smaller one down low with the larger one up top. I kind of like that fit. I think it flows a little better. I kind of want to line up the spokes. So I did try to choose a lampshade that had eight um, long pieces, long pieces of metal all around. So they both have eight that they kind of line up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to utilize a couple of zip ties, plastic zip ties to secure this together. Okay, so I've got my zip ties. So basically, I'm just going to come in and every so often add in a zip tie to kind of just hold this together really well. If this ends up working out, I think I can make some really neat stuff for my garden. Uh, Y'all can make some neat stuff for your garden too. But I think you have to find these on the cheap. Like, don't please don't go buy a brand new lampshade and do this. Oh my gosh, that would break my heart. <laughs> Use old ones that you get at the thrift store, or garage sales, or like that restore home place. I'll I'll put the name of that place um, down below, and I'll put the location for those of you who are in my area because they literally had hundreds and hundreds of this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna clip off the extra plastic on these. Okay, so this is what it looks like this way. I kind of like the bigger up top with the smaller down low. I think it looks really nice. So the next thing I have is chicken wire. And um, this is chicken wire. And it's used for like fencing. I use it for um, floral arrangements. I kind of like ball it up and stick it in a vase and it helps hold all the flowers in place. So I already own all this. So what I would like to do is because I want to fill this with soil, right? So what I'd like to do is go ahead and line the inside of this with um, the chicken wire and it's going to look a hot mess. It's going to take a while to do this. I don't think this is an quick project. I think it's easy. I think it's just a little going to be a little tedious. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then I'm going to start working it into the center of the planter and then secure it as well probably with pieces of wire as opposed to the um, plastic ties because plastic ties are a little bulky and I think if you start seeing it all the way around it look a little messy. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I think I might have to work on the floor, so let's shift. All right, so I'm basically just going in with little pieces. Like I just cut off little pieces of the chicken wire. I didn't try to like go buy my own separate wire. I'm just like unraveling them and utilizing just a little easier and more cost effective. And then I'm just kind of pulling it down into place. 
And I think I'm going to have to secure this with quite a few um, pieces of wire, especially right in the beginning. And I'm not clipping off any of the little pieces of wire yet because I want to make sure that this like works correctly. And then once I feel good about it, I can go tighten up all those wires and then clip them short so you can't really see them. And right here is where I have a lot of extra like bulk. So I'm going to stretch that over a little bit. And I'll probably end up cutting out some of the bulk. So you can see there's a lot more like right here in the center. So I'm just going to Okay, so basically I cut out like a large piece of it just the part that's overlapping and so you can kind of see like the hole so now what I'll do is I'll just take this and stretch it over so that I have a, like a cleaner look instead of just like a bunch of extra chicken wire just kind of like shoved in there all right and then I'm kind of just pulling from the top like spacing some of this out and trying to get it to fold over the top Okay, so I've got it pretty well fitted around the inside. I haven't secured the inside yet, but I am gonna go across the top and do a little bit of trim and then take the excess wire and kind of just wrap it around the top. I'm gonna to point all the jagged portions of the wire in as well. I think that that'll be helpful so that I don't like stab myself at a later date. <laughs> Okay, so I've secured all the way around the top. And so what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit more work along the bottom, just to make sure I'm kind of pulling everything really tight. Okay, I think that looks really good. I feel like this side looks really good, but then the areas like where it overlaps don't look as good. But for the first time trying this out and just trying to figure out what I'm trying to do, and I think it looks pretty darn good. So now I have different metals. Uh, the chicken wire is a different metal. Both of the lampshades are each a different metal and then it's brass in the center. So I am going to spray paint this, give it this a coat of spray paint. I didn't go buy any spray paint for this. I'm just gonna utilize what I have. I think I have a brown, some kind of neutral color is what I'm gonna go for on this one. But you know, there's a lot of possibilities. If you're wanting to add some whimsical pops of colors, it'd be really fun to paint these up in red or pink or yellow, you know, something really fun. And then also you could, you know, like stack more of these or get some really massive um, lampshades. You could do some really fun things with this, but let's go get some paint on it and then I'll show you how I'm gonna line the center. Okay, I'm using some of this hammered Rust-Oleum. It's kind of like a gray black color. It's just what I had on hand. It's definitely too hot to be spray painting, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Okay, so once again at this point, my microphone went out. I promise y'all I'm looking for a new substitute for my microphone, but it just hasn't come in. So originally I was just gonna line the inside of this container with a towel, but it ended up looking so elegant and beautiful. I thought I'd go ahead and spend a little bit more money and line the inside of it with dried Spanish moss. Now this Spanish moss is a green color and it'll eventually fade out. It won't be so neon green, but I thought that would be look really nice. 
So I'm just going to push the moss up against the chicken wire in the container. I ended up using about two and a half, three bags of the moss. I ended up laying it in really thick because I do want this to last quite a while. Once I had the moss all in place, I did go back and add in the towel just because I want to keep it from too much soil slipping through in between the moss. I love to use old towels that I found at garage sales or thrift stores or things along those lines. Um, you can also use landscapers fabric, burlap, things along those lines would work really, really well. I just find that a towel um, works great and it's a great way to keep it out of the dump. I did trim off the extra edges of the towel and then kind of push it all in to clean it up, but I'm pretty obsessed with how this turned out. Next, basically next, I would fill it with soil and a plant, but y'all, it is just too hot to plant anything right now. It would just be a huge waste of money, but this design is going to be going into my shade garden. I think it's going to fit really well with kind of my secret garden direction I'm going, and I love this idea of the moss, and I really am thinking about repeating this again. I was also thinking that you could take like four or five of these and, or three, four or five, and stack and attach them end to end, and end up making some some kind of cool trellis for tomatoes or vines or something so that might be a different project that i do later on all right you all i hope you enjoyed today's video as always make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up and make sure you check me out on facebook instagram and tiktok as always she's mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be thanks y'all